Hey guys, it's Matt here, and today I'm bringing you another episode of Matt Rants. So first off, thank you all so much for tuning in. Before we actually get to the topic of the episode, I want to mention that this past weekend we had a fun slew of releases. Hopefully you've watched those. If you haven't, then I'll briefly talk about them right now. Since it's a Monday Matt Rants, I usually do that a little bit before we actually talk about the episode itself, or the topic in the episode itself. And also, we have a very interesting event happening this week, and we'll talk about that as we uh, as we kind of just go on with this. So, uh, first of all... Uh, If you guys checked out yesterday on Sunday, we were supposed to release a TGP review. That should be coming out tomorrow. Just had to fine-tune a few things. Didn't want to release that out too early and kind of have some issues and errors and things like that. Uh, Also want to mention that on Saturday, we released Those Guys Play Undertale Episode 1. If you guys saw, we actually played uh, Undertale for Season 4 of Those Guys Play, and we're continuing it. And as we always do, we usually continue it as an Episode 1 rather than 2, because then some people feel like, where did one? go. Um, So that's what we're doing there. So you guys can check out those guys play Undertale where we continue our uh, our tales in the underground. And it'll be, it's very, it was very interesting. Very strange. It was myself and Tara. Uh, Tara lives on Mars, if you guys don't remember. So uh, yeah, that was, it was a very fun episode. And uh, hopefully we film some more with her soon. And um, it's very hard to get to Mars. So, you know, I have to make that trek. It's really rough. But um, but yeah, so that was this weekend's set of releases. The event that we have going on this week is actually a five-day Street Fighter 2 30th Anniversary Edition event. I don't know why. EV event. Just a Pokemon is just, uh, it's in my mind right now. It's polluting me. But um, so when it comes to that event, the reason why we're doing it is because I wanted to get the uh, Street Fighter 2 30th Anniversary Edition a while ago, but didn't have the money to do it at the time. So it took me a while, but finally I saved up and I had the cash to get it, which is great. And not only can I get to do I get to show it to you guys, but I also get to compare it to a bunch of other versions of Street Fighter 2 that have come out on the Super Nintendo slash Famicom as well. So that's super, in my opinion, it's super fun. I'm a little biased, but uh, but yes, yeah, so we have a five day event. We'll be doing a bunch of different things uh, each different uh, each day for this you know Street Fighter 2 event but in no way did I want it to kind of take away from what we do here so you know since this came up in the news just last week I thought well we got to do a Matt Rants and and this week we might actually have uh, even more Matt Rants than ever we because you guys love them so much so we're actually gonna be having three this week uh they're gonna be spread out not sure in what way but they will not be conflicting with the Street Fighter 2 event that'll still be happening just as a uh, you know business as usual in terms of that event although it's it's our first ever week-long event you know we've done month long events we've done some pretty long events we've had halloween in july uh we had summer of love so we've had some fun events we had 12 nights of love uh not this past february but the february before so we've had some fun events on the channel before but you know this one is a bit more it's a bit more about the item itself so that was you know so it was a lot of fun doing it already filmed it all so that'll be coming up throughout the next week but now let's move on to the topic itself which if you guys saw from the actual uh from the actual thumbnail it says What's different in this beta? And of course, I'm referring to the Pokemon Silver and the Pokemon uh, Gold. I, it's funny. I had them flipped. I had it as gold and silver. So immediately I threw myself off. I'm like, no, my notes. What's going on? But yeah, so this is about the Pokemon Gold and Silver beta. If you guys didn't know, if you guys didn't know, uh, well, hi, right? This is news to you. Uh, so Pokemon Gold and Silver have a beta that uh, people have known about for a very long time. So the idea of this beta existing isn't new the fact that it has been released though i would argue it's monumental it's an amazing thing and i'll talk about some of the impacts some of the ramifications good ramifications of this being released a little bit later on during the matt rants because of course i want to talk about the first thing i want to talk about is the differences and i'm going to link down below if you guys want to see some of these um both the pokemon releases both how the pokemon looked in the beta compared to the um the retail release and also some other things as well because i'm going to cover as much as i can but if i covered every single thing including the Pokemon, I mean, we'd be here for hours, which if you guys want me to do other videos on this, then please comment below and I would love to, but I don't want to spend, uh, even though I want to talk to you guys about the differences uh, in these two games, because with the uh, retail release, because of course, that's the title of the video, I don't want to sit here for three hours doing this. Uh, if you, Maybe you guys want me to, but I, I feel like eventually it'd be like, we like him, but not that much. All right, so uh, the first thing that we should note is that this is from Space World 1997. And the reason why it's important to specify the date uh, is the fact that when this game was uh, re- not released, but when it was announced, like, hey, you guys, we're coming out with Pokemon Gold and Silver. In my opinion, it was a little bit rushed. 
And I think you can tell in the beta, and of course it was never meant to be released, the public was never really meant to see this, uh, although it's funny, they kind of were because it was being showcased, but they weren't meant to see every single Pokemon. Uh, they're only meant to see the few that they were, that they kind of had coded into the game to be showcased. Now, technically, all the Pokemon are in the game in terms of their, uh, the way they look, right? So their artwork is in the entire game. That's why we can see it now through different links online because it was data mined, so we can see all that. However, there are only a few Pokemon set to actually actually be playable and found in the game itself. So let's do, we should make note of that. Yes, it was meant to be seen by the public, but not every single design was. So let's also make note that when I say the public, I'm referring to the Japanese public. So this entire game, as of right now, both games are in Japanese. So you can play them, you can find them online. Normally, I, you know, I, some of you guys probably don't like that I'm very much like anti-piracy, but at the same time, this is a beta. Like this is not the original game. You want the actual retail game you can go get that over at the 3ds uh virtual console shop right the e-shop so it's like you can just do that why do you have this but you know so since this is the beta it's kind of like well uh we're we're doing this for you know educational research we're trying to see what this is all about a lot like no one's gonna play this beta and be like great i i've played pokemon now no you're gonna want to go actually play the the full game which you can get legally so when it comes to the beta it's just i'm not gonna sit here and be like why are we doing this no this is a beta it's so it's so much different than actually, you know, downloading uh, a game that, you know, like a Nintendo Switch game or something like that, or a PS4 game or something along those lines. Anyway, so uh, this is entirely, the game is entirely in Japanese. Now, there are people working to translate it. Heck, you might be one of them. If so, thank you. Thank you for doing your duty. Uh, so the people trying to translate it, people trying to, de you know, debug and try to uh, get anything else that might be hidden in the game. And also some are trying to do recreations, which, like I mentioned earlier, people have actually actually been trying to do for years because they've seen some screenshots they've seen some really grainy video so people knew this happened in japan in 97 however there was never a rom like this dumped and we don't know who dumped it but someone did and frankly god bless their soul whichever god you believe in they blessed their soul or they should because it's a beautiful thing uh to have this uh dumped and released so uh, just wanted to mention that, uh, yeah, it is in Japanese, so if you are playing it, you have to, you know, if you've been playing Gold and Silver for as long as I have, uh, I imagine you'd know what's what. However, there are some things that are changed, which is why I'm going to bring them up. Yeah, changes in, there are some uh, things in Japanese that if you don't know Japanese, you might not know, oh, this is what that means. And that's what we're going to talk about here. So one thing I want to mention uh, is there's no music during the intro. So that's one thing. So no music at all, completely silent, uh, kind of terrifying because every Pokemon looks happy. So it's a little odd. Uh, also, there is no new soundtrack. So there are songs in the game, but any song in the game is from Red and Green and they're used in the entire demo itself. Now, I want to mention Red and Green because yes, let's remember that uh, Red and Green were the original Pokemon games in Japan. When it came over here, we got Pokemon uh, both Red and then Blue. And then Blue was brought over back to Japan. And something also interesting to note as well, when Blue was brought over here and both back to Japan, the sprites were retouched. So things, so in other words, if you're playing Pokemon Red, the Japanese version versus the American version of Pokemon Red, you will have some differences in some of the sprites, uh, especially Mew. The original, I don't think it was our version of Red, but the original Red, Mew looks like a fucking monster. And I love Mew, but Jesus Christ. Christ. Anyway, moving, moving on. Speaking of Pokemon from Gen 1, uh, any Pokemon that has been brought over from Gen 1, if you can access it, I assume... Uh, either in the Pokédex, even though apparently the only options are play Pokémon and change settings, although that might... Oh no, I'm sure what they mean... Okay, so two different things here. Let me let me uh, not, you know, combine them just yet. Any Pokémon from Gen 1 has the same description that they had in Gen 1. So that was copy and pasted uh, from Japanese uh, Gen 1 to Japanese Gen 2. However, any new Pokémon... So, you know, um, Hopip, uh, Mareep... Uh, the starters aren't in this. Their, their, their artwork, I believe, is. But, actually, their artwork might not even be. But I know that they aren't in the game itself. So you can't play the starters. Anyway, point is, is that they, um, any new Pokemon... The actual Japanese reads, and this is translated, currently investigating this recently discovered Pokemon. 
So that's one thing to note. And then the next thing I was saying was due to it being a demo, only options that are available are play Pokemon and change settings. So with the play Pokemon option, I would imagine that's where you can see the description. Hey, this is what this Pokemon is. Because I remember you can see, I think in the demo at least, you could see descriptions. Uh, you didn't just have to jump to the Pokedex. Uh, although maybe you do get the Pokedex, I'm not sure. Although it says you can only do the two as options. Um, so that's, again, I assume the description might actually be in the Play Pokemon section. Also, you can't save, which is kind of a dub because this is the demo meant to just kind of, you know, reset, kind of give people a feel for the game. You don't need to save. Uh, you can't use the Pokemon Center, which is sad, but you are given like potions and kind of ways to continue. So they do want you to kind of get farther in the game. Uh, but by farther, it's kind of funny because you can't actually, um, you, you can only go to the starting town and the route to the left. However, I do believe you meet trainer, I think his name was Joey in the, um, in the English version, not sure what his Japanese name is. So I assume you can meet Joey and a few other uh, people because you can actually uh, battle other people and meet NPCs. However, just to speed everything up, there is no losing dialogue. So they get there, I'm going to beat you. And then they don't get there, I'm sad dialogue. Um, also, you can't name your character, which I think is odd. I guess they just want to, again, speed things up so that kids aren't sitting there like, what do I want to name myself? So you can't name your character. Uh, the name is randomly chosen, so I guess you'd get, like, gold, silver, or, you know, I don't know. Um, there was supposed to be a joke there, but that kind of just, you know, just petered off. Anyway, so, oh, evolutions removed for starters. So then I guess you can get, uh, the starters. Uh, oh, well, right, you can get the starters, but... There was a difference. There was Chikorita, which I don't know what Chikorita's original name was, but there's Chikorita, and then there is no... I'm sorry. Right. Okay. There is Chikorita. There is no uh, Cyndaquil, and there is no Totodile. There are two completely different... Uh, it looks like they've just, like, uh, kind of, like, replaced, like, what do you mean? There never was a Cyndaquil or a Totodile. Uh, but when it comes to, you know, when it comes to Chikorita, Chikorita does exist, not sure if the name is the same, if the Japanese name is the same. And also uh, her second, not Meganium. Meganium looks similar, just like Chikorita. But her second evolution, I think it's Bayleaf, looks completely different and odd. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so moving on here. So you can actually evolve them in the game. Again, the reason why we know about them uh, having Meganium and stuff like that is because of the fact that it's the artwork is in there. But it's not accessible without doing some hacking, which again, if you're doing that, I want to say you're doing God's work. Thank you. Anyway, so uh, let's look over here to, oh, right. So the player is actually sent back to the title screen if you're of all your Pokemon faint, which again, makes sense. Duh. Uh, also want to mention that both demos contain unique borders. So actually uh, at the title screen, they actually have different borders uh, when you play the game, which is so interesting because uh, Gold has a cool Pikachu and Gengar one. Like so cool, I want that to be my wallpaper. And Silver has one with different like chibi versions of the Pokemon surrounding like little tiny squares in the bowl in the uh, border. So that's cool. Also speaking of the uh, title screens, both versions have a very uh, sketchy version of Ho-Oh, like a very sketchy version of Ho-Oh, and it's kind of interesting because I'm pretty sure, yes, by the time this came out, I don't think uh, Ho-Oh was in the anime yet. So perhaps they, you know, we're still working out Ho-Oh, because the interesting thing is when looking at Slow King, Slow King actually looks very much like the Slow King that was in the movie. So I don't know if maybe, you know, different um, sides of production uh, you know, versus the, because you'd imagine that the show uh, would have um, had a, you know, had it been started before the movie. But um, but it's interesting how Slow King looks very similar to uh, his version, both in this beta and in the movie, versus Ho-Oh, who looks drastically different in this version versus what came out in the anime, both in the first episode and in later episodes as well. Also, if you guys don't know if this is a shock to you, that was Ho-Oh in the first episode of the anime. I know, that shocks me too. Um, because, uh, because by the time the anime came out, we should have had Gen 2 out already, but because of the delays, which I think were a good thing, uh, because of the delays, we did not get that. So that's kind of funny. Um, anyway, so this, uh, so let's see, let's keep on going down here. Uh, yeah, so both versions have, uh, have Ho-Oh, none, neither of them have Lugia, which is odd, but I mean, it happens. Uh, Lugia was just like, just, you know, Ho-Oh, just, I gotta, I gotta take a break. And Ho-Oh was like, sure, man, whatever. 
Uh, and let's see here. Also, what's interesting about Ho Oh Sprite mentioning how it was a little odd and sketchy. Um, it looks, it, to me anyway, it reminds me a lot of red and green. So having both, um, you know, both, uh, and even in blue, of course, we had Blastoise, but having both uh, Charizard and technically Charmander, but still having both Charizard and uh, and Venusaur there with your trainer, although in this case there was no trainer, but having that them there, it kind of very like reminded me of Ho-Oh because it's just kind of Ho-Oh staring at you, not flying beautifully like it did in the final uh, release version. Also, when looking at the opening sequence itself, you can tell that many of the Pokemon were either updated or even replaced. So you actually had some Almanites in the demo that became Shelders in the retail release. You also had Magikarps, uh, Magi Magi Magikarps that were not in color for some reason, but now were. And the reason why I say it's odd, because uh, the, the Almanites, they kind of look like they just blended in with the blue in the water. So that was like, oh, I guess they're, you know, they don't want to have it really be in color. But then when you see the Magikarps, you're like, oh, that's gray versus how they look. Uh, they look a little bit better in the retail version, but they're also red as well. But what gets very interesting to me is now uh, Lapras got a slight redesign, different color, different shading. And Pikachu and Jigglypuff look pretty similar. And funnily enough, I think they look better in the demo which is so odd. I wonder why they look better in the demo, and I'm just not a big fan of the way they did the shading, the, the, the colors in the retail version compared to the demo, so that's very odd. And also want to mention that uh, Blastoise and Venusaur are used in place of Johto starters, so I assume they didn't want to show, again, they didn't want to show uh, Johto evolutions, so they kind of just sat there and were like, yeah, we'll just have uh, Blastoise and Venusaur. And also Charizard at the end was redrawn as well, and its colors are a bit... Uh, more, I want to say defined, they're a bit more, you know, red and vibrant. So that was very interesting as well. Um, oh, one difference between both demos is that Hoppip is found in gold and Meryl is found in silver, which I think that is exactly how it went in the retail version as well. Uh, certain move types were not changed yet, and some just default to normal because they haven't really been uh, they haven't really been worked with or messed with. So I assume they just kind of just defaulted because they were like, eh, we're we're. It's funny too because I don't know if some of these uh, they default to normal because they were in the version that uh, kids or adults played when they played the demo originally, or if it's because people are putting them in and debug and, and stuff like that and, and are realizing, oh, it just defaults to normal. So I don't know that uh, to be fair. Uh, one thing I want to mention as well is that there are some glitches and abnormalities. Uh, poison Pokemon can get poisoned. Aurora Beam can glitch out and say that a Pokemon's 9999 fell. And the reason why it glitches out, I assume, is because it's a, so a Pokemon... This is what I know. A Pokemon is using Substitute and then Aurora Beam is used on it. That causes the glitch. I assume it using Substitute, uh, there's just something wrong with the data and it doesn't do the math right. Because again, I assume this game was not made to what's funny too about a pokemon having aurora beam you might be asking yourself what pokemon has aurora beam right off the bat well here's the thing they may have removed well they said that they removed a lot of the pokemon's evolutions however that in no way means that they removed the ability for them to gain moves as they grow stronger so for all we know someone hacked in a rare candy or someone just i mean heck if a kid if a kid hogged up the thing for three hours he could have gotten a pokemon from level five to level uh to level 20 so you know uh there probably are ways not just through hacking and debugging there probably are ways to see how a pokemon will interact with the area just by playing long enough um, because pokemon do show up in grass if i remember correctly some places they don't but some they do and you can catch pokemon so from the looks of it if someone really wanted to uh i don't know why they would if someone was a hog at this um you know at the at the space fair someone was a huge hog they could have actually gotten to level 99 with a six party uh pokemon because there are 12 in the game i don't know how many you can catch but there are 12 in the game uh also we have some uh, weird unused graphics so we have aerodactyl which apparently could have been flying while lapras was swimming so think of that iconic scene where lapras is swimming we could have had aerodactyl flying like hey bro what's up what that is the funniest thing to me um, also, we have uh, some unused stuff. I'm going to go through these really quick here. We have Poliwhirl Walking, Chansey Walking. Chansey Walking would have been used in a minigame. Chansey Walking, Tiny Snorlax Sleeping. Your main character being a rad dude with a tood on a skateboard. 
And by the way, he would have been on a skateboard, legit. Uh, a non-Lapras-looking surfing animation from Gen 1. So instead of the Lapras one we got, you would have had one from Gen 1. Giovanni in the radio tower. Also, your mom. No, 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 I'm, I'm being serious here. A different outfit for your mom. Apparently a sister for your rival who gets erased like freaking Judy from Family Matters. Uh, Imposter Oak! which apparently happened in the trading card game. I haven't played that, but uh, people are telling me that there's a storyline about an imposter oak in the um, trading card game. And also we have different uh, different outfits for Faulkner, Bugsy, Jasmine, and a biker. Also, we have a hole, which just wasn't used. Apparently it could have fallen into a hole, but Game Freak was like, no, no, we're good. And I was like, all right. Uh, also... We have, as I mentioned throughout this Matt Rance, we have a lot of different Pokemon uh, designs that have been changed. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single one because, again, we'll be here all day, all night, er day. But one thing I want to mention that just kills me is that a lot of these designs, and, and as I noticed, as I looked through, there were some that were very similar minus some um, some color changes, right? So uh, not, not color changes like from uh, blue to um to this version to this demo i'm talking about like you know like gen 1 pokemon i'm talking about like brand new gen 2 pokemon that actually do look very similar like slow king and a few others right look super like giraffe rig super similar but there's one thing that i have to mention that kills me and when i say kills me i mean completely murders me the fact that a lot of these pokemon i feel like you know nintendo game freak were like uh you know a lot of these designs they were like mm, no that doesn't work no, it doesn't work. That's oof. That looks too. It looks too rough. That looks too rough for children. Looks. That's an abomination. That's horrifying. We can't do this. Looks at Remoraid's face. Now that's perfection. Remoraid. What is up with why? Like some of the the bottom of Remoraid was changed. But I love how Remoraid's face. They looked at it and they were like, "It looks horrifying, sir. It could look worse. Make the revision." And you look at Remoraid compared, to, he looks less terrified. Like, he looks like he's fully aware that he's being erased and redrawn. Like, he can feel it. He can just feel it. He's just like, please, God. And, uh, and, so, and also Slow King, like I mentioned earlier, who looks very similar. But his face is just, like, Remoraid looks like he knows that there is an existence of a god. And, it, and it's a god that hurts him by erasing. And Slow King is just like, I'm, uh... I think I exist, right? I'm good. It's so funny, especially how in the movie, Slow King uh, is so uh, thought-provoking and he's just so intelligent. And here, when you look at his design, he's like, hey, I can, uh, uh, the, world's, uh, the world's shorter now. What's going on? It's like, buddy, you're walking on two legs. Am I? Well, that's interesting. Love Slow King so much. Uh, oh, here's something that uh, really interests me. So, of course, all of us know, and if you don't, well, that's cool. But uh, but if you, all of us know, I would imagine that uh, Shinies, they're all about they're all about that math. Math that I can't do. But there's a lot of math involved in Shinies, and people, you know, get up in arms about the, fa about the fact that in newer games, uh, not only are Legendaries hard-coded to not be Shiny, but also the fact that, and that's true by the way, I think it was uh, Diamond and Pearl onward, it doesn't matter how many times you turn your game on and off, you can't get like a shiny Dialga, which yes, makes sense, he's Pokemon God, you can't get shiny God, but still, it's a little odd that, uh, you know, every game up until then, you can get, you know, shiny this, shiny that, but you can't get shiny God, and you can't get any, uh, like if you have a shiny version of any legendary from Diamond onward, you've cheated, and you're bad. Don't do that. Stop it. Uh, because your Poke Bank will find you. Uh, and so, yeah, so basically, you know, they hard coded that to make sure that they are non shiny. However, however, in this game, Pikachu and, Sunfl and Sunflora were hard coded to only appear as shiny. Which is so interesting because, of course, it's the demo. It's what kids are supposed to be playing. So kids are going to be, um, I don't know about Sunflora, especially because I'm pretty sure Sunflora's design looks very different than its finishing, uh, than its retail design. But looking at Pikachu, I'm sure kids were like, uh, Pikachu looks different. And I'm sure there was like a Nintendo or Game Freak employee that was like, they're shiny. You can get different looking Pokemon in the game. Kids like, okay. Because it's very funny to make a Sunflora shiny because it's like, how does a kid know that it's a shiny? 
kid doesn't know what Sunflora looks like. It's just it's just a different Pokemon. So so <laughs> kids probably playing um if the same Sunflora design had been kept and the kids had, you know, gotten gold and silver, they probably would have thought that it was it was the shiny was the original uh so that's something funny but pikachu it's so interesting that they both were hard-coded to appear as shiny exclusively in the game so a few things i want to mention before we actually wrap things up here uh the first thing i want to say is this means a lot for the hacking community i mean this is so big the reason why i said earlier that this was so monumental and i'm sure some of you are like yeah especially some of you who might be like look we have the the, you know, we have the original games, uh, we can even, you know, play them on the virtual console, uh, we have, you know, Pokemon for the Switch coming up, I mean, people are still angry about that, and Matt rants about that as well, um, you know, people, they, you know, some people might be like, ah, who cares, why does this matter, uh, I can just see the Pokemon, and that's it, right, uh, some of you are even saying probably, oh, I saw some of the Pokemon before, right? You know, through other smaller, uh, you know, grainier pictures and things like that. So some of you guys might be like kind of downplaying this. Like, well, why does it matter? Well, for me, it matters because of the fact that, uh, first of all, we're in 2018. I don't know when you're listening to this, but we're in 2018 as of this recording. Um, and the fact that things like this can still be found 21 years later is freaking amazing and that's really what it is for me where this came out 21 years ago as some demo cartridge um that was probably i mean heck it could have just been like modded into a game boy itself it could have been its own random shell that was like sealed off wasn't even a cartridge it was just the um you know the the actual rom board just put in there that kids can play this is something that was thought to have been lost to time that people just saw you know newspaper clippings and other kind of material showcasing this and people were trying to you know make restorations and things like that basically based off of table scraps so imagine being told here are your table scraps and then realizing that you actually found a buffet and that's amazing being told, hey, here are your scraps, good luck, whatever, and then being told, actually, let's open up the curtain, let's peel this back here and show you that it's all you can eat. And you might go, yeah, but I don't like all of this. And there's some of that stuff back there that I can't access. And it's like, you have some, you have some people in like hacking, uh, you have some people in like black um, ski masks just behind you like, don't worry, kid, we'll get you in. Uh, just, you know, all the stuff you can't access. They're like, don't worry, we got this. Um, but it's just, I don't know, to me, this is so big, again, for the hacking community, because it gives a, a lot of people that want to make new Pokemon designs or want to, you know, think like, oh, what would, you know, this pre-evolution of this Pokemon look like, or, or this one look like, some of the stuff that we never really got. Um, I mean, there was, there was a pre there was a, actually an evolution, so not a baby version, there was an evolution of Ditto that looks horrifying. But it's an evolution of Ditto nonetheless, something that we haven't gotten as far as I know to this day, unless Sun and Moon did something radically different. Uh, we haven't gotten one to this day. So for me, this means so much because of uh, just what people can now do with this, what people can do for their own fan games, uh, the way you know people can take these Pokemon sprites, put them back into Pokemon Gold, and now we have working versions, like retail versions of Pokemon Gold, but with Pokemon, um, with Pokemon beta version sprites, oh, and of course silver as well. You can do the same thing with crystal. Now we can have crystal versions looking like the beta. So there is so much that we can do now. Uh, just you know, from a, both from a uh, fan hacking. Now I'm not in the fan hacking community, but again, for those of you that are, I'm very happy for you guys. Uh, but I am in the, you know, I, I am in the community that likes to play some Pokemon fan games every once in a while, uh, both on the channel and just in general. So this is, to me, this is really cool. Um, also want to mention that it shows that there might be more stuff out there, right? Because being in 2018 and, uh, you know, I feel like not that people don't have hope because there are some great channels like Hard for Games and I'm sure there's many others as well, but I l really enjoy Hard for Games because they take uh, some, you know, uh, some beta versions of cartridges and, you know, demo discs, uh, but some really old, like obscure demo discs, like recently I did one, uh, a Japanese GameCube one, and they were getting stuff. And by the way, because it was GameCube, they had that new GameCube HD thing, like the one that, you know, converts your, um, 
your AV to HD. So they were getting some trailers for stuff that, you know, you would have, you would see on YouTube in 240p. And they're getting this in clear, uh, as close to HD as you possibly can, right? So, and of course, we also have had hard for games doing, uh, I remember the uh, something, just some other Game Boy Advance stuff, some beta stuff, uh, Super Nintendo, a bunch of other stuff that they've done. And it's just... You know, I mean, heck, I'm sure their episode on this will probably be very interesting. But, um, but still, getting back to you know, just a bunch of just all of us sitting here. Even though we have YouTube channels like that, we still sometimes sit around and think, ooh, like, is is it all okay still, right? And like, you know, if it's if it's not in some Nintendo vault that they're never gonna or other company vault that they're never gonna release because it's a beta version, what you know, reason they have to release it. Is there a version of it that exists that we could ever get our hands on and dissect and analyze and see what could have been and what was? I mean, think about it. This game, other than some of the stuff that was data mined, but this game was experienced by many people, I would imagine, back during the convention itself. But of course, as you guys can tell just by looking at the links that I left, also if you guys have seen some of this before I even started talking about it, then you know that what we got is vastly different in many different ways. Com- I mean, I didn't get to talk about the map or some of the items and item descriptions and things like that, um, and some of the moves and what their descriptions are and what they do. There's so much that we didn't get that people experienced when they played the demo that it's just, I mean, it's stuff that Japan didn't even technically get because their, you know, version, I'm sure we got some stuff touched up compared to the version they got, you know, a month or a year before or something like that. But their version that they got, their retail version, did not look anything like this beta in many ways. So I think it's just, it is so uh, interesting to me and hopefully to you as well that this is our history, this is where we came from, and hopefully, you know, stuff like this doesn't get lost again, you know? Uh, Hopefully, uh, we can find more stuff like this, and uh, we can kind of just get more, I guess, more information on where some of these games were, and because we know where they went, right? You know, I'm sure many of you guys are, are, are fans of gold and silver and crystal like I am, but it's just so interesting to see the origins, if you will. Uh, so either way, that about wraps up this episode of Matt Rants. Kind of long, but a lot of info we had to bring up. And hopefully you tune in next time for another episode of Matt Rants. Thank you all so much. Love you guys. Before you click out that video, though, if you uh, disagree with me, if you think this isn't gaming history and no one should care, please comment below. Uh, regardless, though, I want to hear some of your thoughts about some of the different Pokemon. Some very, you know, uh, if you if you agree with me on the Remorade thing. Uh, and, and what you think about this game. If you've played it yourself, if you've seen other people play it. And speaking of other people playing it, I'm other people. And I will be playing this later on this week. Uh, probably Silver first, I would say. I like Silver more than Gold. Uh, so I'll probably be playing Silver first later on this week either on saturday or sunday tune into the channel please remember to like and subscribe if you liked the video if you didn't like the video you can still like and subscribe regardless but uh either way if you like and subscribe you can see me play this game later on this week it'll be a heck of a lot of fun uh and uh i i think i'll enjoy it i don't know and hopefully you guys enjoy me enjoying it perhaps so either way thank you all so much love you guys take care and tune in next time for another episode of matt rents all right so see ya